Hello, I'm Dr. Grafalls. To prepare for this module, I want to introduce the theoretical approach of existentialism. Existentialism is a philosophical perspective that we can use to analyze certain works of literature and cinema. You may have thought of some of the ideas of existentialism before, but after you read about the existentialists, you'll have a set of philosophers and concepts you can use to write about literature in a scholarly manner. That is, in a manner that's always in conversation with previous thinkers in history. Now, to make our study of existentialism more compact, uh, we'll focus on four exist of existentialism thematic concerns. Now, this is not this doesn't cover all of existentialism. It's just a, a way of simplifying it a bit. So first, uh, we'll see the importance of understanding and actualizing subjective experience. Second, we'll examine the problem of inauthenticity, thinking especially of Martin Heidegger's idea of das man or the anyone, uh, and Sartre's concept of bad faith, which you'll read about in the Jean Val text. Third, we'll look at the necessity or importance of the negative. So existentialism is going to emphasize the importance of the experience of angst or anxiety, the experience of coming to terms of death and non-being. And finally, we'll discuss the concept of transcendence as it's reframed by existentialism. Beginning with the idea of subjective experience, the French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre had a useful formula for existentialism. For Sartre, existentialism in a nutshell means that existence precedes essence. Now, to understand this formula, we have to know what essence means. It's easy to think about essence when we think of inanimate objects. What is the essence, for instance, of a knife? Well, the essence of a knife is to cut. If a knife does not cut, it's not a knife. What's the essence of a pencil? Well, if my pencil does not write, it's not a pencil anymore. I can throw it in the trash. Okay, but now, what's the essence of a human subject? You might sense that this is a problem because the answer is not that simple. Indeed, those who think they know the answer to this question might be limiting the, the possibilities of the human subject. For Sat, existence always comes before essence. First, we exist. First, we experience reality. First, we perceive and act in the world, and only then can we begin to think about the essence of the human subject. So, as you might suspect, the emphasis for existentialists is not on defining the human subject, which they see as a kind of violence. Instead, the focus is going to be on how we experience reality, on the structures of our experience, on how we act our being in the world, and how we strive to go beyond the labels others may have on us, to transcend beyond the limits of previously conceived ideas. So when it comes to issues of truth, an existentialist doesn't go about it as if it were a math problem or a science problem to be solved once and for all. In existentialism, truth has less to do with objective knowing and more to do with how subjectivity discloses the world. John Wall tells us in his discussion who was perhaps the first existentialist, Soren Kierkegaard, quote, note that we what we have just said concerning the existence, mode of thinking, and being discloses the object of his thought. 
the infinite. For with such infinite passion, one can only desire the infinite. Thus, the how of the quest gives the goal. Existentialism is thus critical of the limits of scientific discourse or technological discourse for disclosing the human condition or how we are beings in the world. As John Wall states, quote, the philosophy of existence reminds us once more of what all great philosophy has tried to teach us, that there are views of reality which cannot be completely reduced to scientific formulations, end of quote. Moving on to our second theme. It is important to understand the different ways existence limits itself, the different ways it falls into a state of inauthenticity, either through our failure to conceive of our own freedom or through our being positioned by others, by our history, by our culture, by our society. The philosopher Barton Heidegger had a word for a sphere of everyday human activity where we give up on our, on our authenticity. He called this das Mann, the German word for the anyone or the they. Wall states, quote, in order that we ourselves may truly exist, rather than remain in the sphere of things seen and things used, we must quit the inauthentic sphere of existence. Ordinarily, due to our own laziness and the pressure of society, we remain in an everyday world where we're not really in contact with ourselves. This everyday world is the domain of what Heidegger calls the anyone, or what we might call the domain of every man, where we're interchangeable with each other. In this domain of anyone, we're not conscious of our own existence, and an awareness of ourselves as existence is attainable only by traversing certain experiences, like that of anguish, which put us in the presence of a background of nothingness from which being erupts. End of quote. This last part of the quote leads us to our next theme. It may seem paradoxical, but for the existentialists, the experience of the negative, in other words, the experience of nothingness, of non-being, of death, is actually in the end of positive experience. These experiences get us out of our inauthentic modes of existence and get us in tune with our being. Now, when the existentialists state that the understanding of nothingness is important to life, they're not saying that there is no meaning to life. Rather, the meaning of life is not that pre-given meaning you've passively accepted from others. Instead, the meaning of existence is entirely wrapped up in our understanding of the meaning of nothingness and of death. And by actively experiencing our life through what Heidegger calls our being towards death, existence is actually illuminated, and our relation to beings takes on a greater meaning, what Heidegger calls care. We care about the world more through passing through these experiences. This leads us to a new understanding of the concept of transcendence. While transcendence conventionally means, in a traditional religious sense, something outside the world, in existentialism, transcendence is a subject's movement towards something in the world. It is this movement beyond ourselves that creates value. A famous formula for this was Kierkegaard's quote, one is not born a Christian, one becomes one. End of quote. The atheist existentialist Simone de Beauvoir rephrased this by saying, quote, one is not born a woman, one becomes one. End of quote. For existentialists, human existence 
is a process of becoming, a process that takes into account both being and non-being. Kierkegaard was a major influence for this conception of transcendence. As Wall mentions, quote, the existent individual then will be he who has this intensity of feeling because he is in contact with something outside of himself. He will undergo a kind of crucifixion of the understanding. He will be essentially anxious and infinitely interested in respect to his existence because an eternity of pains or an eternity of joys depend upon his relation with God. End of quote. Now, later existentialists would secularize this understanding of transcendence, but the framework remained quite similar. This is how Wald categorizes Heidegger's concept of transcendence. Quote, in this limited world, we do accomplish a movement, or rather, movements of transcendence. Not towards God, because for Heidegger, God does not exist, but towards the world, towards the future, and towards other people. Thus, the idea of transcendence loses its religious character and acquires, paradoxically enough, a sort of imminent character. It is a transcendence in imminence. End of quote. So, using these four themes as a framework, on Thursday, we'll be discussing the Angs Varda film, Cleo from 5 to 7. What's crucial is to connect the film to passages from the Jean Vall text and the Richard Kearney chapter on Heidegger. Right? I expect uh, quotes from both these texts uh, uh, connected to certain s scenes from the film. So I hope this introduction helps and Looking forward to Thursday discussion. Thank you.